Well, hello there, everybody. Dave Lytle back. And today uh, I'm pretty much, I think, going to uh, come full circle, resolve the whole search for an 8x30 or 8x32. Any of you who've been catching my earlier videos would know that that was a real thing for me for a while. Uh, it kind of went by the wayside when I decided there was nothing out there that would meet my needs and then discovered that I had something that was meeting those needs all along, and that was the little Zoin slash Zoom anti-poro 8x32s that I picked up from Yvonne E in uh, China. Uh, great little unit. We just did a video on that. Um, essentially, it does give me pretty much everything I need. And my last video on the 8x30, 8x32 quest where I was saying, uh, you know, it's a dry well. There's nothing out there that'll meet my needs. Uh, I did get a note from a commentator uh, wrote me to tell me that there really was something out there that I had missed. Now, I had looked at the Opticron uh, uh, catalog to see what they had to offer and didn't find anything. Evidently, the reason I didn't find it is because it's no longer being made. Uh, but uh, this gentleman did say that the Opticron and Magic 8x32 should fit my needs because uh, I definitely needed the eye relief because I have to wear my glasses. Uh, it provided 21 millimeters of eye relief. That's good. It's waterproof, uh, fog proof. Uh, it's uh, got uh, the nice eye cups. Uh, pretty much, he said, it's, it's, it's extremely sharp and it's going to meet what your requirements uh, are. And I tried to find it and I wasn't able to actually find it here in the States. I found out that for the most part, they're uh, in England. So I started to Google and research and find some outfit in England that had them. Uh, I did find them, uh, but for some reason, and I still don't know what that reason is, uh, they just simply didn't want to ship to the States. So I couldn't get it out of there. Uh, recently, I did f start to find them uh, being made available on eBay. Found one, took the risk. It was coming out of England. And I went for it, and uh, even with the shipping costs, I thought it came in reasonably. Um, and I put it through its paces. So <clears throat> while I didn't need one, because I had my little Zoin, uh, this is a true Poro. And uh, I figured, why, why the heck not? So here goes. What I was told was it's extremely sharp. And uh, it is. It's very sharp. It's sharp, but slightly frustrating. There's enough field curvature in this unit, and it only gives me about 50% uh, of a sweet spot, that very often I will be getting in on my target, get it almost in focus. Focusing is a little difficult. Not impossible, but just a little difficult because the wheel, while not nearly as touchy as the Carson 3D, uh, is still a bit touchy. And you'll have a tendency to go in and out of focus real quick and have to double back. Um, for the absolute purest, when it comes to getting the utmost of sharpness from both sides of the binocular, uh, a person might complain uh, about the diopter. I think it's clever. Uh, I'd heard about it in advance. I was looking forward to seeing how it works. It's not a lockable unit, but it appears to have a, a set of little teeth underneath, uh, almost like a ratchet system, not quite, but they're little detentes, and you basically click your way to uh, as close to perfection as you can get. 
it may be that it's just one side or the other of, of what the other side is, but um, that's where the a little bit of frustration comes in. But it's close. It's close enough to be able to enjoy. Uh, nonetheless, once you get everything in focus, despite the touchiness of the central wheel, uh, what I've noticed is it's maybe it's from the field curvature. I cannot speak as an expert here, but it is a slightly frustrating unit for me. You will be looking and it will appear that right here it's nice and in focus. And I'm still well inside the sweet spot, but right over here, it isn't quite in focus, is it? Well, touch the wheel. Okay, there, there, I got it. But now over here, it doesn't look like it's in focus. I am not going to swear that there's an actual fault or problem with the lenses, uh, but there's just something about how the thing is set up to where it, it just doesn't pop into, you know, a perfect sharp picture um, comes darn close but on top of that there's something about the alignment of the with the eyepieces I don't know what it is it it's like they don't quite overlap correctly um, it's it's you put it to your eyes and it doesn't really just bam it's just it's not sitting there despite the fact that you've already worked up the proper interpupillary distance um, it's a it's a little chunky unit a little weight to it um, a little heavier than what probably a lot of people would want to carry around coating seem nice uh, obviously BAK4 prisms uh, nice round exit pupils uh, ever so slight uh, uh, reflections of light inside but overall uh, a nice seemingly durable waterproof unit uh, the eye pieces the, the eye cups they're extendable uh, they're essentially firm but they're only to position either all the way down or all the way up um, I'm always wear them down I have no reason for them to be out but uh, yeah, how did it perform in the 1951 U.S. Air Force test target? Uh, I put it up against the Zoin because now the Zoins are, you know, they're they're the standard now. And uh, I got pretty much the same thing I got when I was comparing the Orion Resolux to the Fujinons, in that while they both resolved the same target. Uh, that particular day, what just simply snapped into place was group negative one, element one. The Zoins let you see it with ease. Where these, not quite. Uh, it's not that I couldn't make out the same amount of white spacing between the bars. Uh, it's just that uh, there was something about the Zoins that just let everything come through clearer and snap in faster and of course it definitely has a, a much flatter field how they pull it off I don't know but it's it's surprisingly flat um, this is uh, nonetheless I mean you know I'm gonna say this <clears throat> if you have the money to get these and you want to get them because you know they just simply don't make them anymore and you want to nab something that might increase in value I don't know if they will but um, yeah fine but uh, for the same amount of money or less you're going to be ahead of the game with these zoins or seco zoom whichever name you find them under um, this definitely gives you more of that deep 3d look because you are spacing your objectives further apart. And uh, lastly, I do want to mention that I only had these things for like a week. I inspected them when they came in. I'm not faulting the person who sold them to me. They, they passed inspection. But within a week, with no 
no trials, no tribulations, no hardships. These things were not dropped. They weren't beaten in any way. Uh, the only thing that happened to them is they went in and out of a refrigerated house uh, out onto a very hot and humid Florida uh, porch. And going back in and out, and in and out, I'm having to put it to that because evidently there were stresses inside this thing and it has flaked off uh, a piece of the one of the prisms on the right side. It doesn't affect the view because fortunately it's far enough off to the side. It's, it's you know, out of the light train. But nonetheless, uh, I've never had that happen with any other binocular. Um, I don't know, maybe the prisms are being held in too tightly or I have no idea what caused it. It's very unfortunate. But uh, could you run into that? I don't know. Might want to ask around other people who've owned these things, see if uh, you've heard of anything similar. Uh, the field on the Zoins 8.2, field on this 7. It's not the widest field. Um, sorry, weight feels fairly light, feels fairly heavy and chunky. Probably about the same weight, just the distribution is odd. Um, case. Very decent case. I like the case. Got the old Velcro. Um, nice strap. I haven't put it on. Nice strap. But um, will I be taking this out? Um, probably not. I'm probably going to set it up somewhere and uh, hope that someday the value has gone up enough to where I can sell it despite the fact that I have a chipped prism. Um, It, 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 folk, it, it it's sharp. It is what the guy said. It is waterproof. It has the eye relief that I needed and it's sharp. Just a little frustrating in how it displays that sharpness. And uh, that's it. Quick and simple. Uh, we'll try and give you some stats and picks and we'll leave it at that. Thanks guys. Bye.